Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and this is the video for the 5% series for Double Game Week 37. So we start by looking at how the players in the system did last game week and then what the recommendations are for this coming game week. And I'm assuming that you're all bench boosting, but I'll try and remember to put in a few comments for those of us, like me, who have already used the bench boost. Starting with the goalkeepers, the expensive keepers, Raya 6, Leno 6. For the cheaper keepers, we have Petrovic 6, Henderson 6. For the expensive defenders, Robertson 13. The Arsenal boys all got a return, that's nice. And that's all. For the cheaper defenders, we have Mitchell 12. Well done if you had him. Gvardiel 6, Branthwaite 5. For the expensive midfielders, we had Salah 13, Saka 10, Sun 7, Foden 5. The cheaper midfielders, Richarlison 9, Palmer 8, Gordon 6, Havertz 5. And the cheapest midfielders, Rice 14, well done if you had him. He's clearly been a very good buy recently, he's quite cheap. Johnson 5, and that's all. For the forwards, Haaland 21, Isaac 7. And for the cheaper forwards, Jackson 16. Now there's a lot of teams out there, last game we got 100 points, give or take a few. There are plenty of players in the system that would hopefully have given you a green arrow. I think everyone I looked at who I know is following the system did get a green arrow last week, so that was nice. So, double game week 37. Vicario, good keeper, double game week, away to Sheffield United next game week. Reasonable chance of getting good returns both those games. He's the most expensive keeper in the system, but if you need to move a keeper on and you've got the money, he's a perfectly good choice. Reyes, good keeper if you've got him. Personally, if I had him and I was bench boosting, I would just keep him. Happy to play him, even though it's just one game and it's away to United. Next game week, he's got Everton. You'll want him for that. Onana's got a double this game week. He's fine. Now, I've not made him green, even though he's got a double, because Man United have been shocking the last few games. So, is he going to keep a clean sheet at home to Arsenal and Newcastle? Probably no clean sheets there, I'm thinking. Pickford at home to Sheffield United. I wouldn't be selling him even on a bench boost. Now Leno, if I had him, I would probably sell him even if it was for a hit because he's playing Man City, so probably not a, a clean sheet there. And whoever you've got a chance of, if you're picking a doubler, they would get more than four points more than Leno's going to get this game week. So Leno's completely sellable. For the cheaper keepers... Petrovic's a good buy, so for example, Leno to Petrovic, I think is probably worth it. Henderson, I would probably move him on, but you don't have to if you're bench boosting. Now Dubravka, last time I checked, we don't know when Pope's going to be back, so Dubravka may well get both games. If he does, he's probably a good keeper to have, but we don't know for sure that he is, or at least I don't know last time I checked. If you've got Dubravka, I would absolutely be keeping him. If you don't have Dubravka, I would not be buying him. Ariola, he's sellable, but he's nice and cheap. I guess if you could do Ariola to Petrovic, that may be worth it. But Ariola is at home to Luton, so he may get a clean sheet there. So Trippier, I've made him sellable simply because time recording, we don't know if he's going to play or not. And if you're bench boosting and you have Trippier and then he doesn't play the first game, then he comes on for 20 minutes in the second game. It would have been worth selling him for sure. If you're not bench boosting, it's not so important to sell him. I've got him. I'm not bench boosting. I'm probably not going to sell him. If he plays, or looks like he's going to be playing in the first game, he's absolutely worth keeping. And if we knew he was playing, I suspect a lot of managers would be bringing him in. So if you can afford to check shortly before the deadline and he's playing, keep him if you've got him. I wouldn't be buying him, though, unless we know for sure he's going to be playing. So Virgil van Dijk and Robertson for Liverpool. I've not made them orange. You could sell Virgil van Dijk if you wanted to, to free up some money. I wouldn't sell Robertson, even though he's only got one game this game week, though. Robertson's been nice and attacking recently. But Virgil van Dijk is also fine to keep. And then two Arsenal boys, White and Saliba, they're fine. Even though they're way to Man United, United haven't been great recently. And you're going to want the next game week anyway. So Poro's green, he's got a double this game week and then he's away to Sheffield United. So if you had Virgil van Dijk, Virgil to Poro for free, definitely worth it. Virgil to Poro for a hit, possibly worth it. 
Uh, if you want a bit of fun, you'd probably do it because it's worth it. You get the second game. Shah's injured if you got Amy Selim, even for a hit. Gabrielle's worth keeping. For the cheaper defenders, uh, Dallow. So I've not made him green, even though he's got a double, because United have been shocking. So in reality, the only chance he's got of getting a return is if he gets an assist or a remote chance of a goal. Would not expect a clean sheet from him. It's not worth bringing Dallow in. Kvardiol, it is worth bringing him in. 5.1 million. Uh, Man City, he has been playing the games recently. Reasonable chance of getting three games in the next two game weeks. Absolutely worth having. So Virgil van Dijk to Guardiol, that'd be a good pick. A reason not to buy him is, of course, you only get three Man City spots. So it would limit what you could do elsewhere. But he's a good player. Burn, worth having. Reasonable chance of a clean sheet in the first game. And 4.7 is not too expensive. So Aiton Nori, home to Palace this game week. If it's for free, Aiton Nori to burn is definitely worth doing. If it's for a hit, I probably wouldn't do that. But for a hit, I would do Aiton Nori to Gvardio, for example, if you had the money. So Aiton Nori is fine to have. But if you want to move him on to get someone who's got two games, it's probably all right. Branthwaite, home to Sheffield United. He's all right to keep as he is this game week. If you've got a free transfer spare, you can swap him out. I wouldn't move him on for a hit, though. Mitchell, he's nice and cheap. That's why I've kept him in there. I've not made him orange. For a free, you can move him on. I wouldn't move him on for a hit, though, I don't think. I think Gusto, although he's got a double, he only got, I think, about seven minutes in the last game. So we don't know if he's going to be starting two games. If we knew he was playing 80, 90 minutes in both games, he'd be green absolutely worth getting but we don't know that so if you've got gusto it's all right to keep him personally i wouldn't be bringing him in though for the midfielders the expensive midfielders so i've made salah sellable if you can get a nice team together this week and you've got salah and you don't need to sell him don't sell him the reason to sell him is to free up some funds and then to maybe make your midfield slightly better for the double game week so it's it's kind of all right to sell him for a hit, but if he went to Aston Villa and got 15 points, nobody would be particularly surprised at that. So Kevin De Bruyne is a lot cheaper than Salah. Got a double this game week, home to West Ham next game week. He could easily outscore Salah in the next few game weeks. Buy more than four points. Absolutely doable. So if you did Salah to KDB, that's understandable. But equally, it's feasible. Salah outscores KDB. So you're just taking a gamble there. It all depends on how much, I guess, fun you want and how, like, if you watch the scores come in, you might be more tempted to get KDB because you get to see your score gradually going up. You've got two chances of it. If it's just a case of every week you log on, maybe watch these videos and do your moves, then it's right to keep Salah and not bother taking a four-point hit there. Sun's probably worth having. 9.9. .9. He's not been as good recently as he has been historically, but he's still all right. Sack is okay. If I had him, I wouldn't be selling him. Same with Odegaard. So Fernandez, if we know he's playing, he's absolutely worth having and he'd be green. But he missed the last game week and we don't know whether he's going to be playing or not. So if you've got him and at time of doing your transfers, he's still flagged and you want to move him on, that's okay. But you're risking you're missing out on points. So if he was fit, definitely play him. Because he's a bit dodgy, uh, he's sellable if you want to sell him. But if you want to keep him, that is also perfectly reasonable. Foden's worth having, quite expensive. I know there's been content creators saying if you could get to Foden or KDB, they'd go KDB. I'm not sure I agree with that. I think Foden's got more chance of getting the more minutes. They can both get returns. So if I could only have one and I was buying them now, I'd personally probably buy Foden. Regarding the cheaper midfielders... Madison's got a double but hasn't been great recently so I wouldn't be buying him. I would only sell him if it frees up money personally to get somebody else. So he's all right but I wouldn't be buying him. Luis Diaz, I've made him sellable because there would be other midfielders that have got a double that are worth having instead of Luis Diaz. Havertz is all right, I wouldn't be buying him but if you've got him I think he's right to keep. So Richarlison, Luis Diaz to Richarlison for example, that's probably worth a hit. Gordon's worth having. There's a reasonable chance you won't play Gordon next week. You'll have other players who are better. 
But for this game week, the first game is home to Brighton. Good chance of some points there. And there's a remote chance you get some points away to Old Trafford for a second game. Palmer, you should have Palmer. Barnes, so although he's got a double, he's not been getting so many minutes recently. If he was getting lots of minutes, he would probably be a good player to have. But we don't know that he is. So I'd say don't buy Barnes. If you've got him, you don't have to sell him. Definitely don't sell him for a hit. But if you can move him on for free and you wanted to, that would be all right. For the cheapest midfielders, as a, he's been doing quite well recently, but he's not got a double. It wouldn't be unreasonable to move him on. I probably wouldn't move him on for a hit though. Johnson's got a double. He's worth having. So as I did Johnson for free, I think that'd be a good move. Rice has been very good recently and he's nice and cheap. If you've got him personally, I wouldn't be selling him. So two new Chelsea midfielders that have got a double this game week then home to Bournemouth next game week. Gallagher and Madaroki 4.4 and 4.3. If I could have just one, I'd probably go for Gallagher, but he's got more chance of getting six or seven points, whereas madaroki has got more chance of getting 10, 12 points, but he's also got more chance of getting one or two points. So just depends on your... Your risk appetite and how much fun you want. But either of those would be a reasonable choice. And then Garnacho, He's got a double game week. But I've not made him green. Because again United haven't been great recently. If you've got him absolutely keep him. I personally wouldn't be buying him. Unless I, it was the only money I had left. So if I had an extra 0.4. I'd buy Conor Gallagher before I bought Garnacho this game week. For the forwards. Haaland. It's not worth taking a massive amount of hits for him, but if you can get him in your team, he's probably worth having. And if you have got him, then well done. Watkins is sellable, even though he could obviously score at home this week to Liverpool, might score next week away to Palace. He's quite a bit of money. He does take up a forward slot and you could get a double game week player who's probably going to get more than four points, more than Watkins this game week. Like Isaac, for example. If you've got Watkins and not Isaac, you buy Isaac. Darwin is not getting the minutes and he's Darwin. He's absolutely fine to sell. You don't have to sell him, but if I had him, I'd be selling him even if it was for a hit. So Hoyland, he's got two games, but he's not been great recently because United haven't been great recently. So I've not made him green. If you've got him, he's absolutely fine to keep. But personally, I wouldn't be buying him. For the cheaper forwards, Solanke, although he's a good player, may score this game week. You could get another forward this game week who's got two games so maybe better for example Jackson if you've got Solanke and not Jackson you've got a spare Chelsea slot it's probably worth doing that move even if it costs you four points so Kuna's nice and cheap and home to Palace so he's okay to keep and Munez home to Man City then away to Luton but he's only 4.4 so he's worth unless you're if you're swimming in money you could move Kuna or Munez on but they're kind of all right to keep. And I know a lot of managers are struggling with money, in which case it's probably not worth moving them on. And remember, of course, next game week, you're going to need players on your bench anyway. So do you really want to be spending points and money getting the player that's going to be sitting on your bench next game week? So the suggested benching order for the goalkeepers, I'm suggesting the first keeper you see that you've got goes on your bench, which means your other keeper is the one that you're playing. These are just suggestions you do whatever you like. But if throughout the season you've been following the benching suggestions, you've probably been doing okay. So Leno, home to Man City, he'd be on your bench. Then it'd be Henderson, Ariola, Raya, Pickford. And then we've got double game week players of Dubravka, Onana, Petrovic and Vicario. So for the other players, I'm suggesting the first player you see goes position three on your bench, the next one position two and the last one position one. These are just suggestions. If you want to do something else, that's fine. If you want to play all the doublers you can, that's fine. I do have some single game week players on here higher than some of the doublers. That is intentional. And I think it's because they've got more chance of getting the more points. But it is definitely more fun to play doublers. And this game should really be about fun. It should be about fun. <laughs> So Mitchell, Aiton Nore, Munez, Darwin, Branthwaite, Virgil, Luis Diaz, Eze, Kuna, Rice, Robertson, Saliba, Gabriel, White, Odegaard, Solanke, Barnes, 
Gusto, Madison, Dallow, Byrne, Trippier, Garnacho, Havertz, Watkins, Saka, Porro, Gallagher, Midwaki, Johnson, Hoyland, Gvardiol, Salah. So he's the highest single game player I've got on here. But I'm suggesting if you've got Salah and Johnson, or Salah and uh, Garnacho, you play Salah. And then Richarlison, Gordon and Fernandez. Regarding captaincy, Haaland is absolutely the safest to wear the old mule hat. He's going to be the most captained. And if you don't captain him and he outscores whoever you choose, you're going to lose a lot of ranking points because loads of managers would be gaining ground on you or pulling away from you. However, he's not the only choice. And if you want to do something different, that's fine. If you're trying to catch up with someone on your league, I don't think not captaining Haaland is the way to go. I think you choose other players to be the differential and not not captaining him. But you don't have to captain him. Other reasonable choices would be Palmer, Sun, Foden, Hezak, Jackson. They'd be my first choices. But if you didn't want to do those or want to choose someone else, just go for another double game weaker who's a midfielder or a forward. Now, normally I say don't choose two from the same team. But when it's a double game week, you can. So if you wanted to have... Harland is your captain and Foden is your vice captain. You could do that, for example. Currently, I'm intending to choose Harland as my captain. I'd have to hear that he's going to be injured, I think, to not be choosing him. And as for the background picture, that's supposed to be Deadpool playing football or possibly soccer. Because, of course, Deadpool is played by Ryan Reynolds. And, of course, he's a co-owner of Wrexham. And Wrexham last season went up from the Championship to League Two. And this season, they've gone from League 2 to League 1, which is absolutely amazing. So we need to have a picture of uh, Ryan Reynolds, I think. There we have it, my suggestions for Double Game Week 37. Like I said, I've not got my bench boost. I do have my triple captain. So my current plan is triple captain Hull in this game week. Um, there's a lot of fun to be had, but there's only one game week left, of course, after this week. So just be careful not to take too many hits. If you take no hits at all... That's a bit of a differential because there'll be a lot of managers around you that are taking hits. But the most important thing is just have fun with the game. All right, thank you very much for watching. Bye. <laughs>